but so basically what we're trying to recreate is uh, this kind of pattern uh, so you can see uh, cubes are moving around uh, so simple sprites are moving around and they're just bouncing off the walls just like a screensaver and <clears throat> if I had more of them We'll have more dense pattern. Uh, but what's happening is basically each one of them has an individual script. So I'll just delete all of them. Uh, I'll select one, just let it play. And so all it does is uh, just bouncing around the walls. So it hits a certain point in space and then it just reverses its uh, speed. So I'm going to recreate that. Uh, let me just remove all of the code I've been using here. Uh, okay, so I started by creating a sprite. Uh, so let's just start from the beginning. So create sprite, uh, square sprite like that. Place it here. Okay, so I've placed my square sprite here. Uh, then I want to add the script to it. So I will call it uh, movement. And I'll just simply add it to the sprite. So first things first, I just want to um, uh, move my object. Uh, to move my object, uh, this can be achieved using uh, transform dot translate, and I want to move it on x axis. So here I'll just put one here and zero everywhere else like that. So you should move uh, one unit on start uh, to the right. So now if I press play, you, you can see my uh, square moved one unit right, just like that. Uh, so this is fine, but I want to move it uh, on update. So I'll just move it here, save it. Uh, perhaps I can decrease uh, the value of the speed. So I'll put uh, 0.1f, so it's a little bit slower. Press play. So great, we have movement. Uh, so now uh, I just want to test uh, if it's reached a certain uh, point in space. So for example, so my current position is zero zero zero, and if you reached, let's say, uh, ten. On x axis, then I want to reverse it. Okay, um, so first I just need to find out how to do that. So I will do it like this. So if transform.position.x is greater than 10, then uh, do something. So right now um, I can't really use that code because I will need to reverse the speed. But what I can do, I can um, uh, rotate it just to see what's going on. So transform.rotate. Zero, zero, one. So the moment it will be out of boundaries, it will just start rotating. And you can see that creates kind of interesting effect where <laughs> it rotates 
uh, 180 and goes all the way back. So if I had a few of these squares, uh, they will all have very similar behavior. So it will just turn around and go back. Uh, so this is interesting and I think you can do implementation with uh, squ uh, squares like that. But I just want to change its uh, uh, direction, right? So just reverse its speed. So instead of rotation, uh, I want to change uh, this speed right here. So what I will create is a float variable and I will call this um, speed. And let's set it to 0.1f and pass it into here. Uh, so for now, nothing has really changed. I just created the variable and I passed it in here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to simply reverse my uh, speed uh, when uh, it hits the boundary, right? So I will say speed is equals to uh, negative speed. So let's just play that. And you can see they bounce back, but then they, they carry on going uh, on the left side. So I want also something to prevent them from um, uh, going too far left. So let's do a similar thing. So if transform dot uh, position dot x is so so we can check like what values I'm looking for. So if it's less than let's say minus ten, so this time is going to be negative. So I'm going to use less sign minus ten then I want to do the same thing. I just want to reverse the speed. So, you know, the way it works, if the speed is positive, it will become negative. And if the speed is negative, it will be, become positive. As double negative equals positive, right? So let's just play that and see if they bounce around the screen. Okay, so we have a simple movement going on here already. Uh, so now what I can do is um, I can also pass my speed into um, uh, on Y axis. So in other words, um, I can also move it up, up. Uh, and I'll just pass the same speed just for now, just to see what happens. Uh, so you can see because I'm reversing uh, both of the speeds, they're just bouncing back and forth. So I think at this point it'll be a good idea to separate my uh, speed into x speed and y speed. So I'll make another variable. So I'll just so first I'll click. Uh, let's just keep this at zero. Then I'll double click on this. Uh, I'll click rename, and I'll call this x speed. And I'll create another float. Call this uh, y speed. And I'll set it to same same value for now, and I'll pass it into here. So now, if I press play, so you will see there will be moving between boundaries uh, of x, but not y. So this is great. So I just want to do a similar thing, similar thing, but for Y. But before I do that, um, there's already, um, I, I can refactor my code because I can see there's a little bit of repetition here because this and that, it's exactly the same line. So what I can say is uh, if transform uh, position.x is greater than 10 uh, or uh, it's less than 10, so I can just pass in the same statement and just use one if statement instead, just like that. So this should work for 
I don't know, like X boundaries as before. Okay, so this is happening. Uh, now let's do basically the same thing but for Y. So if I want to, I can just copy this, paste it here, and replace uh, all of the X values with Y values. So Y, 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 Y. Save that. Press play. And we have a simple bounce going around. From this point, I can go ahead and make it so that, um, so perhaps all of this can be a function because it does very specific thing. So I will call it um, avoid uh, bounce. So, and if I just place this here inside of the function, then I can call this function and it will run the same code. I think I'm guessing an error. Okay. Okay, so when you see this kind of error, Microsoft are just basically restart your units here. Yeah. Uh, so now open my script again. Right, okay, so we have created a function and we're using it here. Uh, so the next thing to do would be, um, <clears throat> so if you want to, you can uh, expose a variable. So for example, um, speed. So we, we can uh, set speed here since they have the same speed, right? So I can make another variable, call it um, uh, public float speed set it to uh, 0 0.1 f and then uh, at the beginning so on start uh, x speed will become speed and y speed will also become speed okay so that way i can control their speed using a single variable You see this is exposed so if I made one of them faster then uh, that particular object will move faster than others uh, so another thing when you are assigning something and you know these two variables will be equal to this one uh, what you can do instead you can write uh, x speed is equals to y speed is equals to speed So this way, um, they will both be equal to speed. So if I press play, it should be the same. Yep. Okay, so the next thing I can do is I can make, for example, um, my boundaries into a variable because you can see they're all uh, 10 here so it's 10 10 10 uh, so I can make that into a public uh, let's do a float uh, boundary and it's equals to 10 then I can take it <coughs> and pass it into here so boundary so here I'm pasting it here, but see I'm keeping the minus sign because it's important it's minus uh, 10, right? And I'm doing the same thing here, like that, and I'm keeping the sign. Uh, so now if I want to, I can give them different boundary. 
So this can be nine, this can be five, I don't know, like 20 and so on. So they should bounce around uh, different uh, boundaries. Okay, so <clears throat> a, th a thing that I want to show you is a, a parametric uh, a function. So what you can do is, uh, if your variable is internalized and you don't really need to have it in here, then what you can do instead of writing this, so I'm just going to delete it, uh, you can make, so, so see this highlights as red, but what I can make is uh, inside of my uh, bounce function, I can make a, a float and I can call it uh, boundary and uh, I can set this default value to let's say 10, right? Uh, so this way, uh, inside of my function, I can uh, pass in um, a variable. So in this case, uh, it's boundary and it's equals to 10. And then when I'm calling a function, uh, you can see it didn't... Uh, so, so this is just working by default because there is a default value here. But if I were to remove uh, 10, then uh, the function should hi highlight as... Um, red because it's expecting a value so I can pass in a value here myself so let's say I can put 5 and so what happens here is uh, inside of this function it will take that 5 and it will pass it into boundary variable and it will use that here okay so let's just save it and so now if I press play like I will I will still have boundary but this time it's uh, it's a local variable in the function, so it's a parameter of the function. Uh, so I can set a default value, like let's say 10, but whenever uh, I'm calling it, I can override it here by 5, or uh, if I don't put anything, then it will take in the original value, which is, in this case, is 10. Uh, so also, if you want to, you can have um, multiple parameters. So for example, we can have um, X boundary and Y boundary, right? Uh, so I will do it this way. So uh, X boundary, and it will go inside of here. And then uh, with a comma, I can write another float, and this will be my uh, Y boundary, and I'll also set 10. And I will pass in my Y, y boundary into um, to uh, this if statement where it's dealing with y-axis. Uh, so s same as before, you can see my function is working. Like so, for example, if I were to write it, you know, bounce, uh, it will uh, create the function, but it also expects two variables. So so this will run because there are uh, default values already entered, but I can always override them. So I can always say that uh, let's say I want it to bounce between uh, two on x and 10 on Y. So you can see now they bouncing around this area. Or I can reverse it, you know, it can be 10 and 2 instead. And if you want to, you can pass inside of there like a dynamic value or something that changes. But you can see they will bounce around around that, that area. So I think some of them are glitching out because they were spawned in outside of the um, uh, the bounding box. Yeah. So if I just put them back in, they should work. Okay, so this is a parametric function. And you can see we can just pass in different values and they will uh, only exist like here. 
So well, yeah, what's handy about it? Uh, so sometimes you don't want to expose too much stuff in your um, uh, so, so for example in in your class or uh, in the inspector, so you can just make it uh, internalized like this. Okay, so the next thing, uh, let's do something like um, a speed variable. We can assign it automatically. So I'll just make um, so speed is equals to random dot range between um, let's do zero point one f and one f. So I want my speed to be between these values, and since since I'm assigning it um, on start, then I don't need to expose it anymore. So I can just make it private, and it doesn't need a default value. So I can just do that. So random speed will be assigned, and then it will be assigned to x and y uh, variables. Let's just change this back to 10, 10 by 10. So now every time I play it, they should have a somewhat different speed. Okay, so creating like slightly different behavior every time. Uh, so another thing I can do is um, I can make a, a return function, uh, which is similar to what's happening here, to be honest. But um, I will just show you how to do it. Uh, because if if you take a look at what's happening here, is we have a um, we have our variable, and then we're running a function with some parameters, and uh, that way we're assigning a random value to my speed. Right, so we can always do something similar. So, for example, uh, I'll make a, a return function. So, when you are making the return function, first you need to define what value you're returning. So, I'm going to start with a float, and um, I will call it random speed. And in here, I will uh, pass in, I think, the same value. I will pass in this. Um, so I will just. So so for now, for now, I think it's better if I just return one, right? So I will just return one. <clears throat> and yeah, let's just return one. I think it'll be easier to understand. Uh, so basically, now I can use this uh, function. Uh, as a value. So instead of passing in this, uh, I can pass in random speed as a function. And all of their speeds should be one because this function simply returns one. So now I can press play and they all should move pretty fast. So, right? Uh, but Obviously, like I don't, you know, need to return one. It can be something more interesting, like uh, you know, return random range from zero point one to one f. Like this. So I don't know. Like this can make your code a little bit cleaner. Uh, so you will basically calculate something. So this is just a very simple calculation is outputting a random number, but it can be something a little bit more intricate. And yeah, and this will give me a random number. And same thing as before, if I want to, I can make it a return function. And it can also be a parametric function. So just like in this case, basically. So I can make uh, two floats, so float min, so minimum value and float max value. And I can just pass them in here. So minimum, maximum, and 
so when I'm creating this function here, when I'm calling it, I can set random speed and I can set my minimum value and maximum value. So let's let it be 1.f and um, just 1f maybe, like that. Okay, so what we have created here is um, a parametric return function, which is very similar to this. It's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, but it can also be something different. Uh, so for example, uh, so for example, So for example, we can take, uh, so th yeah, this is just an example. We can take a value, right? And we can check if it's odd or even. So we'll just create a function for that. Um, and so I just want to output whether it's odd or even, right? So it should be true or false. So we'll start my um, return function with Boolean, so Boolean. And then um, I will call this function uh, is uh, even and this function will need to uh, return something right so uh, so first I want to pass in a value so float um, value and here um, I will say so uh, if value uh, so, so if I use a mod operator on that value and it will give me um, a zero, then that should make it uh, even, I believe. Let, let's just find out. So then I'll return true. Uh, otherwise, I will return false. Uh, and I will just simply, um, on start function, I will place here uh, is even is even and, and I will put um, let's say 10 and I just want to print that so I'm just printing this value yeah so uh, 10 is even so it gives you the right output but you can see it gives you uh, output in a boolean statement which sometimes is like all you want uh, if I if I pass in like let's say one you will you know check the value and it will give me an output so is even is false And, and then that could be used, you know, directly as um, some sort of a check in your game. So, for example, uh, if is even, and you know, you can set it to is it true, then you know, do something here. Uh, so, for example. Yeah, maybe we can do something fun with that value actually. Uh, so an update when we are bouncing our um, squares, we can check if uh, so the position so transform dot position dot x is even on the bounce maybe so the moment the bounce happens so if, if the position happens to be even at that point then we can change its sprite to something like that so get component sprite renderer dot color is equals to uh, color dot red so 
So let's see if that happens. So I think they're never hitting even numbers, it's always something else. Let's add more. be the case that it's never a full number so I can just um, cast it so it becomes an integer so basically um, exposition currently is a float so it's you know you can have any value like you know 0 0.76 and so on right but if I will uh, cast that value as an integer it will just give me full values, so like 0, 1, 2, 3, and nothing in between. So this method is called casting. Let's try that. Yeah, this time it worked. So I, th I think it worked on the first go, as far as I can see. So I guess it's always even when they hit that value. Okay. So that's something that you can do. Uh, I'm going to remove that for now. So I'm just going to remove this because um, I don't want to use it. Uh, and reduce that. Uh, so another thing, if you have a single uh, statement you can also always just reduce it like this. So you're just doing one thing. And uh, I think the typical rule is uh, when you are writing a long line like this, it shouldn't be longer than like six uh, expressions. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's on the limit basically. <laughs> uh, but it can look neater sometimes. If it's just a single expression, we can just do that. Okay, so I have created uh, a return function and, well, it's a parametric return function and also just a regular parametric function. For now, I just want to make my, uh, my cubes look a little bit prettier. So let's just see what I can do. Okay, so first I think it will be nice for them to slow down a bit, They're a little bit too aggressive. So let's just do between, so random speed between this and that. So that's, I think, a little bit nicer. Okay, so now I want to change their uh, color, and for that I like using a uh, gradient, so I'll just make a public uh, gradient, uh, my gradient, 
save it. Uh, so then I will select all of the objects that will use that gradient. So I'll just select a bunch of them. So all of the squares, click on the gradient and um, uh, I can create my gradient here. So let's say from like yellow to uh, green. So one thing is, uh, if you're happy with, the gra with your gradient, you can always click on new and it will add it to your, um, uh, to your presets. Uh, so for example, like these are the presets I have here. So let's use that one. Okay, so now we have our uh, gradient and the gradient basically takes in values between zero and one. Uh, so that's great. So I can just go in here on my start and I can write something like um, get component sprite renderer dot color is equals to um, so we just need to evaluate our gradient so my gradient uh, dot evaluate oops and if I will pass in zero here and uh, then I should get so all of them should be let's see what color so all of them should be blue Yeah, if I pass in one, then all of them should be um, this kind of like red orange color, just like that. Uh, but I want to pass in there um, uh, so random value, so random dot range between zero f and one f. So basically they should take on any of those values. So just like that. Uh, so another nice thing to do is uh, to add a, a trail renderer. So I'll just select all of them and add the trail renderer. So if I press play now, then we'll have a bunch of um, uh, purple lines because they don't have any uh, material so they're just displaying well basically nothing just <laughs> magenta color um, so what we want to do is first of all create a material for our trail so I will do it this way I'll create material uh, trail mat uh, and I want it to be uh, so of type Particles, or rather, which one should I use? Uh, so I think I will go for particles unlit, and uh, I want it to be transparent. So I will select either fade or transparent. This is up to you. So I will select fade as the first one's first value. So now if I select all of my squares. I'll scroll down a bit so there's a material option and you can see right now there's nothing there so I'll just drag and drop my trail material in here and if I press play I should see a ton of white lines everywhere uh, so first things first I want to make it shorter so we'll decrease time by one uh, I think I'll make my trail a, bit, a little bit smaller and I also want to change color so let's say it will start with white or whatever color it has and then it will change to uh, so transparent so invisible so you see this little nodes on here so this is transparency and the nodes at the bottom they're responsible for color but right now I just want to have it so that it goes from white to um, transparent
Okay, so okay, so this is pretty good, but I also want to have uh, my trail uh, my trail renderer to have kind of like the same color as um, the square itself. So I can access that value by saying uh, get component uh, trail renderer dot and I believe it's called start color. Yeah, so we have start color and I will set it to the same thing as before. And again, we could line them up like this as well. But thing is, each statement is kind of long, so I will keep them separate. Because if basically if I did, you know, if I did something like that, I, I think that's not very readable. It's just a lot of mess, so I'll just keep it how it was. So yeah, that's kind of like another thing. It's always, you know, <laughs> like a design decision, like how you want to display your information. Uh, so I think in this case it makes sense because they're all short and they all kind of like do one thing. But in here they're like very lengthy and there's a lot of things happening here. So it's, you know, I definitely want to get them right. So I'm ke keeping them separated. Okay, so one thing is happening right now, um, I'm setting a random value, so so the sprite itself gets a random value and then on top of that um, trail renderer gets a random value. So instead of that I just want to pass in sprite color here. So my trail renderer at start will have same color as the sprite color and it's already changed at the beginning based on that. So you can see now the color corresponds to the object. And uh, so you can also mess with, for example, um, like the scale of the object. So um, we can do that on start. So transform.local um, scale is equals to new vector free and I can just pass in my speed as a um, I can pass in my speed as a scale because I know that my speed is anything between 0 0.1 and 0, 0 0.1 So this is working. I can um, also perhaps make the trail a bit thinner. And we have that nice effect. So if you want to uh, take it to the next level, you can um, play with colors a little bit. So for example, um, so the default color of the skybox is, um, well, it's typically like blue or something, but so what I want to show you is, uh, so I'm working with colors uh, of the gradient between blue and orange, right? which are actually complementary colors. So if I clicked um, on, on my color wheel, you can see the blue and orange, they are complementary because they are on the, op the opposite spectrum. Uh, so if I uh, took my background and I made it, uh, let's say one of the colors, but dark and with less color value, so like away from the color, so here, it would kind of automatically look nice. So I can either use this or this. Uh, I can also make it into like a, 
um, like a triangular color palette and this could be interesting as well like that also works because it gives them like a nice blend uh, and then so another thing to consider which is uh, quite interesting so we have uh, different uh, clearing flags on our camera so by default it's set to skybox or a solid color uh, well in this context it's the same thing but if you're working in 3d you'll have a skybox uh, in 2d you have a solid color which you can change uh, but you can also tell your computer uh, not to uh, clear the previous image uh, so what's that gonna do is it's just gonna uh, keep uh, each rendering so uh, a thing to understand is the way um, a, c a computer displays something on the screen uh, it will uh, clear the background then it will draw something new and then uh, it will repeat that process over and over again so on every frame you will cl clear everything and draw that object from scratch right but if you tell it not to clear that up uh, the background it's actually um, you have this nice effect and um, it's less process intensive as well and so for example now if I like rotated my screen you'll get a really interesting effect so let's just add a little rotation on my screen uh, so, so rotate camera And I just simply want to rotate my camera. Uh, so transform dot rotate zero zero one maybe. And then I will select my uh, uh, camera option to uh, don't clear anything. So I think this is a little bit too fast, but you get the idea. So I will change it like this and maybe where did it go? So maybe I want to keep the background like that. So you can see with simple code you can make some really nice visuals. Uh, I'll just leave it how it was and I will disable uh, that script just for now. So I just want to pass in uh, a cosine wave with their movement, so as they're moving, they'll be also bouncing up and down to get that nice little effect. Uh, so I can do that easily by... Um, so I can add the return function that just returns um, like cosine wave, right? So, so it will be a float because I want the float value. And... Um, here it will be um, uh, cosine or maybe like cosine over time cosine over time so you will return cosine uh, over time uh, so it's 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 already highlighted as red because I need to return something uh, that's fine I haven't finished what I'm doing so uh, so I just want to return uh, math function dot cosine and inside of here we'll pass uh, time dot time uh, so that basically should make it so that um, yeah it returns a, um, a 
a cosine fa uh, fun uh, function based on uh, our time, right? Like that's all it does for now. Uh, so I can take this and I can add it, for example, to my um, da -da -da, where is my movement? So my movement is here. So I can add it to my uh, x speed. So you can see I'm adding uh, x speed with a uh, uh, cosine over time as a function, but because it returns a value, uh, I can do that. So for now, I will just pass that in and just show you how it works, or rather, it shouldn't work that well. But let's just let's just, let's just see what it is. So I'll press play. And you can see that they're just kind of doing their own thing because so what's happening is my cosine wave is just way too powerful so it just completely takes over uh, the rest of the code <laughs> right uh, so it will be nice to have some sort of parameters to control my co uh, cosine wave right and we can do that with uh, uh, by adding some parameters here so we no longer need to store them in here and just you know have a ton of very uh, like unrelated variables on top of the script. So uh, I will just go to my uh, cosine function, right? Right now it just returns um, uh, cosine of, uh, based on time. So I will do two things. So I need frequency. So we'll make a float which is uh, frequency. I'll just call it fr, and I'll set it one by default. So any value multiply by one is one uh, that's the reasoning for that and then I'll make a amplitude which will also be one uh, and so here we'll multiply this by frequency so time multiplied uh, by this value is my frequency and then multiplying the overall function by uh, a value is my amplitude Uh, so right now, because I gave them default parameters, which is one and one, you will basically output the same thing. Uh, but if I want to, I can start messing with it. So I can have, um, uh, so let's do like a higher frequency. So you can see if I'll start typing in, so we can do higher frequency and uh, lower amplitude. So something like that, we can get the values right. So you can see they're moving, but they're also going up and down based on the cosine wave. Or, uh, uh, yeah, cosine wave, right? So I can, for example, increase my amplitude. Let's make it a little bit more powerful. And you can see they will all bounce around the square, but they will also have additional movement. And this function is pretty handy because I can just, you know, take it and paste it anywhere I want. So I can add it to uh, Y movement as well. Uh, I can add it with same parameters or I can change parameters if I want to because that's what I can do now just like that uh, let, let's just keep it the same parameters see if it works well or not yeah so because I'm passing a sine wave on X and Y you're getting this um, kind of like a diagonal wave if you like basically goes up and down, up and down, because I'm passing um, cosine twice, right? Uh, so we can do something like that, where 
Well, first of all, let's just separate this into two different functions because I want to use a sine wave as well, right? So we'll just copy this, paste it here, and call this uh, sine wave. And this time I'll just pass sine. And the rest of the code will be exactly the same. <clears throat> and in here, instead of passing uh, cosine, I will pass sine function. So what this should create is a, a circular movement. And for example, if I was to get rid of my x speed and y speed completely, it would just be a purely <laughs> circular movement. It would be just a circle. And you can see, like, I can change these parameters. So, for example, frequency or amplitude, and it will make it into more of a um, oval shape. So I'm getting ovals. Uh, but for now, I just want to return to what I had, more or less. Uh, maybe I will have like increase frequency here, keep frequency here, and pass that in. Again, same as before, I can turn off my um, depth clearing, or, um, well, e either one of them. Uh, turn that off, maybe turn on my rotation. Uh, perhaps <clears throat> uh, zoom out camera a little bit. Like that. I'm just going to disable camera rotation and disable um, the clearing. <clears throat> okay, so we have objects moving up and down with a cosine wave. So I just want to remove the cosine wave for now. <clears throat> So it's a bit more obvious what's happening. Uh, so we'll just comment that out, copy and paste it here, and place it here, just in case I want to bring it back. For now, I just want to use simple, simple implementation of movement. But this is here in case I need it. <coughs> okay. So we've got our simple movement. Okay, so um, so I just want to show you how to make um, your uh, Unity event. So similar how we have it in, uh, um, so when you use UI Canvas, I'll just show you an example. If I make a button, for example. So here's my button. And you could have something like, let's say, if I press this button, uh, something changes, so I will just Add a little square here, and I'll disable other ones just for now. So here's my new square. <clears throat> so let's do just a simple thing where uh, when I press on a square, it changes color. So um, change to well, change color. And 
and here we'll just make a, a public function. So public void um, uh, red, and it will just basically make it um, <clears throat> get component sprite renderer dot color is equals to color dot red. So this is public, so it's available to uh, other scripts. And now I can make it so that uh, when I press a button, when I press a button, uh, so we have an event here, an event listener. So on click, something can happen, right? So you can click uh, uh, add here, and I can add my square that I just created, and it will have a script which is a change color, and I want to change it to red. So now if I press play and um, click on a button. It should become red just like that okay so this is pretty cool uh, but you can also make it yourself so you can make your own custom unity events uh, so let's do it uh, like this let's do it like this so um, I will remove the canvas for now remove all of that and re-enable my squares or maybe just make just one for now to keep it simple so here's my square you should move around and you know bounce around the screen yeah, same as before and so I just want to make it so that uh, every time uh, it bounces it can trigger an event and that event can be anything it can be you know a sound effect it can be a particle system it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be like a score. Uh, so for now, I just want to have it. <clears throat> so you will need to add using uh, unity engine dot uh, uh, events. So add that library. Uh, so then you will need to uh, define the event itself. So I will go with a, a public Unity, <clears throat> uh, Unity event, uh, and I will just call it bounce, just like that. Uh, so now the like the event is created. I just need to uh, call it from somewhere. So I will call my um, uh, bounce event uh, every time uh, it bounces from the wall. So this is a good time to expand my uh, uh, if statements. So we'll just add the brackets back in. And either when this happens or this happens, I want to call that event. So I'll just say uh, bounce dot uh, invoke, and that will invoke that event, just like that. And. So you can see if I go here, uh, I have an event here. And I can add something here, like it, it, it can be anything. It can be like generate particles, add score, um, can be pretty much anything. But I think for this implementation, I just wanted to uh, change its color. So every time it bounces, it just changes its color. Uh, so we already have code here for um, assigning a color. So that could become a function. So we'll make it into a public, um, void which is um, I don't know, assign color something like that uh, I can paste it here pass it and paste it here I can assign it initially and then I can also uh, go inside of here and every time it bounces uh, I can just um, call that same function so so it will be on movement and uh, assign color. So now it should change color randomly every time it bounces. So you can see it kind of goes between orange, blue, yellow and so on. Um, so I can again, same as before, make a bunch of these boxes. Press play. 
and you can see every time they hit something they well try to change their color because sometimes it can be the same color so you have to keep that in mind uh, and this can also be you know uh, because right now I'm running it privately on my own um, I'm calling my own function so I might as well just uh, call that function from here you know I can just instead just assign color right and and that would work in exactly the same way like this will achieve the same effect right but uh, the only difference is that uh, when I'm calling an event it doesn't have to be a private function I can call um, I can call out something else <clears throat> so for example let's make it so that uh, every time uh, I bounce in the wall I just uh, uh, count how like how many times that happened so I'm just going to make a, a UI element which will be a text and I will I think I'll just center it and I will make it um, perhaps white. Uh, I will allow it to overflow, make it larger. Um, center it like that. So here's my text. So numbers will go here. So zero, zero, zero. <clears throat> and maybe it should, it should go a little bit on top like that. So this will be my um, counter, and I will add a script to my counter, which will be, um, again, just a counter script. Okay, so all this does, it stores uh, uh, like current count, so uh, I will make it uh, an integer count and I'll set it to zero and I will just uh, display it so so first I will need to add uh, a UI library so unity uh, engine dot UI and then I can get a component text dot text is set to um, uh, count so it's not gonna like that because I'm trying to pass in um, <clears throat> uh, integer into a string. Uh, so I like different ways of doing it. I think you can try to cast it. It doesn't like that. Okay, let's cast. Let's do it the regular way then. So you can do it this way. So that will make it into a string, or you can also do it this way. So you, if you add the integer to a, a string, it just becomes string automatically. So that's like up to you how you do it. Uh, if this method makes more sense to you, then go for it. But um, I don't know, I tend to use this, just shorter. Uh, so, so on start, it will just display our account. And then I just want to make a, a public um, function, which is simply just updates uh, uh, the score or update counter. And so what that does, uh, our, my count goes up by one, and then I just need to update it in the um, <clears throat> UI element. So it will go up and it will update it. So now, let it just load. Okay, here we go. So here's my counter. So if I go to my uh, squares, I can select them. Uh, well, let's just start with one. I'll start with one square and uh, I will add another um, uh, event here which will be my counter and I want to choose the function that I just created which is um, update counter so now if I press play so you can see every time uh, it's hitting the wall it uh, updates the counter right and if I made a bunch of these squares, so I'll just duplicate them. Uh, 
uh, it will count all of them because it's already assigned. So you just like all it can do is add the number. So it just always increases in value. And we can make a lot more of them. <clears throat> so this is working and then we can just go back to movement and bring back the, uh, you know, the nice movement with uh, cosine wave. exact same way okay so um, yeah I will leave the implementation here so just remember that you need to do um, uh, so add it in your library, then make a very like Unity event variable name, and then you need to call it from somewhere. Uh, and this is super handy because this event can be anything. So for example, if you're making a platformer, you just add an event every time you jump. So that can you know spawn particles that you know you're jumping from the floor. That could um, create a sound effect. Um, I don't know, maybe uh, check how many times you jumped. It can be a lot of different things. But the whole point is that uh, when you're using events, it's really easy to communicate between different scripts without uh, you know, finding it via script. You, you can just drag and drop it. And as long as it, um, the function is public, you can access it. 